Cooper are one of those brands. They're trying to take a startup mentality, but they're part of a legacy group in Volkswagen overall. We're here at the launch in Western Motors of their new showroom. But what we really, really want to see is what's out the back. We want to talk a little bit about batteries and figure out what's all this nonsense about swapping them out that's going on in the media at the moment. Let's have a look. I don't think that the Cooper Bourne has got as much attention as it deserves over the last two years since it was launched in Ireland. For me, it's that little bit more stylish and eye-catching than the ID3, of which it really is its twin brother. You can get it in either 58 or 77 kilowatt hour battery, and you get in real-world ranges of 350 or 450 kilometers for the larger battery, maybe 600 if you're careful. But the thing here is that they're all based on the MEB platform across the Volkswagen Group. That's the architecture that the car is based on, the battery and the software that's used, and the motors as well. This car is almost identical underneath to the likes of the ID3, the ID4, the Audi Q4, e-tron, the Skoda Enyaq, and it gives Volkswagen Group great adaptability and a lot of dependability when it comes to getting a new Cupra. But I think it's time now to go into the back, into the details, and hear from Robbie Matthews. Blake, what we're standing in here at the minute is our, this is our general workshop and maintenance center. We're also a battery repair center for our Volkswagen Group uh, brands that we look after also. Okay, so this is not just one particular brand, you can this, blend them all here, it, and you've got a lot of ramps as well, obviously. We, we have increased the capacity of the workshop, which has historically been 12 ramps. We've added in a new section now, which has added in a further seven ramps, so we're a 19 ramp workshop. And would it be fair to say that selling the car is only one part of it? What happens back here is actually a major part of the business. The, the, this, is, this is the part of the business that helps us continue to sell to these customers because this is where it's it's what goes on in this part of the business is what helps us sell the next car to our existing customers. Sure, and what I'm particularly interested in is electric vehicles obviously and there's a lot of talk at the moment about batteries, how long they last and what happens when they break down etc and so on. We won't go into detail. Can you show me a little bit more detail here in the workshop what you do in terms of batteries and EVs? Yes, certainly, certainly. So this is one example here. Now this isn't a full EV, it's, no, it's a plug-in hybrid. But what are you guys doing here? This is a Skoda Superb IV, which is, um, a, it has a combustion engine and a battery in it. And this yeah. one here, we've dropped the battery out of it um, because this vehicle needs one of the modules in the battery replaced. Now you just said something really interesting there. You said one of the modules. Whereas what we hear on the media is that once a battery goes like in your phone, you throw the whole thing away. That's not the case. No, this, this particular vehicle here has six modules as this battery in this vehicle and if we what, what happens with diagnostic is we're able to um, find out which of the modules has a problem and that particular module can be replaced okay. so you don't throw away the whole thing you just find the one fault in it and replace that exactly okay. yes and could we now go and have a look at a fully electric can one and get a bit more detail there yes blake we yeah. can Robbie, I'm standing beside an ID3, you've got an ID4 and another ID3 over there. These are fully electric vehicles. Just tell me a little bit more about what's happening just here. I see a lot of computers. So th what we've got is we've got this vehicle plugged in for a software update and Ricardo, one of our technicians, one of our, our HVEs, yeah. is working on this vehicle at the moment. So Ricardo would be one of the experts for what goes on in these vehicles. Ricardo, can I ask you, there's this impression that when batteries fail, you just throw out the whole thing, but that's not really the case. So what are you doing here? Is this diagnosis? So what we're here, this is just uh, software enhancements. So it basically adds new features to the vehicle. Um, the whole idea that you'll have to replace the whole battery is it's incorrect, um, especially with the Volkswagen Group electric cars. So if you had an issue, it would more likely be a module replacement. Uh, as in terms of the whole battery itself, that would never be the case. And Robbie, can I ask you, is this something that's happening regularly? Does this impression that you drive an EV for 80,000 kilometers, the battery's shot? Are you, you're selling with cars now for three or four years, so obviously batteries have been thrown out all the time, is that right? <laughs> no, the, the battery, battery replacement is something that's only done on a rare occasion. Um, it's mainly software enhancements that's done on the vehicle, or diagnostics, which um, Ricardo and the guys, the rest of the guys in the workshop team are able to uh, fault find what's going on in the car at that moment. 
Okay. And then my last question for you before we go is that are, not every garage is like this. Are, are the people here specially trained? Is this an individual uh, facility, I suppose, that you don't get these all over the country? No, this, this, this is now a, a, a battery repair centre for Volkswagen Group brands. Um, and we've got some high voltage technicians, we've got some master technicians in this building that are specifically trained to work on these vehicles. Right, excellent. Well, look, thank you very much for your time, Robbie. Thanks, and Ricardo, and best of luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. I really wanted to grab some time on the simulator, but while I was queuing up, I got the chance to grab Mark McGrath's head of product for Cooper in Ireland and put a few questions to him about the future of the brand. Mark, we're here at the launch. It's pretty exciting for you guys, but tell me a little bit more about Cooper's intentions in the market in terms of electric vehicles, because that's what we're, we're all about. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Mike. So I guess this with Cooper, when the brand was developed, it always had its eyes set on an electric future. The, one of the very first cars we launched was the Bourne and here in Ireland about two years ago, and it started with incredible success. In 2023 alone, it accounted for nearly 30 or 40 percent of all of our sales in the country. So Cooper very much is an electric brand. Yeah, of course we offer other powertrains, but we're always looking towards the future. Joining the Bourne very very soon will be the Tavascan, which will be an all electric SUV. And we know in Ireland SUVs all electric they go hand in hand together. So we're very much looking forward to that. Excellent. And you're talking about the future in terms of what you want to bring in and then continue the expansion of the Bourne, obviously. But there's challenges in the market at the moment. What's the biggest one that you're facing? Is it convincing people to go electric or how, how do you see that? Yeah, absolutely. I think when it comes to any new technology, we have to ride the waves of adoption. We've already cleared the first wave of early adopters. People who knew about electric cars are very, very keen to buy them. That probably happened in Ireland around 2020, 2021. And we're now in the next phase where we have to convince the wider markets. And the wider markets may need a little bit more convincing. And there is challenges, we can't ignore them. Infrastructure needs to improve for sure. And we know that there has to be a readjustment of the market. A lot of the early models at launch were quite expensive. And we're seeing that happen now. There's price adjustments happening across a lot of the brands to make those new vehicles more accessible to people. And in fact, we'll see a lot of strong uh, finance offers, etc., to really help people make that switch over. But in addition to that, we still need the government support. We know that we need incentives to stay in place for electric cars in order for that adoption to ramp up, to follow and emulate a country like the world. Great. Well, look, I look forward to getting into more of these cars as you launch them. Thanks for your time. Best of luck with it. Thank you. So really impressive launch from Cooper here and as we heard some great plans for the future, really looking forward to those extra models coming on board to expand what they do in terms of EVs in Ireland. But the big story here today for me was about batteries, battery replacements, the cost and how all that works. What we're seeing in the media that you just throw away a battery after 50,000 kilometres or that there's any sort of a fault to get rid of the whole thing, that's just not the case. They've got good diagnostics here and what we're actually doing is replacing one module of 10 or 12 in a car to fix it. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.